Hi everyone, welcome back. Today, we're diving into a test that might show up in your blood work and leave you wondering, what does this even mean? And that's the C-reactive protein test, or CRP. Let's make this simple, but thorough. By the end of this video, you'll understand what CRP really tells you when it matters and when it doesn't. What is CRP? C-reactive protein is something your liver makes and releases into your bloodstream whenever there's inflammation in your body. Think of it like your body's smoke alarm. It doesn't tell you where the fire is or what's causing it, but it tells you something's going on. Now, inflammation isn't always bad. It's part of your body's defense system. If you twist your ankle, get a cut, or catch the flu, inflammation is how your body heals. But chronic low-grade inflammation, that's a different story. That's the kind we worry about long-term because it's been linked to everything from heart disease to diabetes, to autoimmune conditions. The two types of CRP tests. There are actually two different versions of this test, and they serve different purposes. Standard CRP is used when your doctor suspects acute inflammation, like a bacterial infection, pneumonia, or an autoimmune flare. Then there's high-sensitivity CRP, or HSCRP. This one detects much smaller amounts of inflammation, we're talking subtle, chronic inflammation that may not cause any symptoms, but still puts stress on your body over time. This version is used more often to assess your cardiovascular risk. A lot of confusion happens when people mix these two up, so let me clarify the numbers. CRP levels, what's normal, what's not. Let's start with standard CRP. A normal level is typically less than five milligrams per liter of blood. If your CRP is between 10 and 40, that could mean a mild to moderate infection, like the flu or a dental abscess. If it's above 100, that's a red flag. We're thinking about more serious infections, maybe even sepsis. Above 200 is critical, often seen in severe infections or major trauma. Now for high sensitivity CRP, remember this is for heart health. Less than one milligram per liter is considered low risk for cardiovascular disease. One to three milligrams is average risk. Above 3 mg ml is high risk, but only when we're talking about chronic inflammation in otherwise healthy individuals. Here's the important part. If your HSCRP is above 10, we no longer use it to assess heart risk because that usually means something else is going on, like an infection or inflammation from an injury. What causes elevated CRP? CRP is a nonspecific marker, and that's both its strength and weakness. It can go up in infections, bacterial, viral, or fungal, autoimmune diseases like rheumatoid arthritis or lupus, chronic inflammatory diseases like Crohn's or ulcerative colitis, tissue injury, including trauma, burns, or post-surgery recovery, obesity, yes, even without any infection or illness, fat tissue can trigger low-grade inflammation, cancer, especially advanced or metastatic disease, smoking, lack of exercise, or poor diet, all of these can raise CRP too. It's worth repeating, CRP does not tell you the cause. It just tells you that inflammation is happening. Think of it like a red warning light on your dashboard. It tells you something's off, but you'll need further tests to figure out what. What if your CRP is high? So let's say you get your results back and your CRP is elevated. What next? First, don't panic. Your doctor will look at your symptoms, history, and other test results to figure out what's going on. They might order, a complete blood count to look for signs of infection, imaging like a chest x-ray or ultrasound, autoimmune panels, depending on your risk factors, or just repeat the CRP in a few days to see if it's trending down. Once the cause is identified, the treatment follows. Infections, antibiotics or antivirals, autoimmune flares, immunosuppressants or steroids, chronic inflammation. That's where lifestyle changes come in. Anti-inflammatory diets, regular exercise, quitting smoking, stress reduction. These things matter and they move the needle on your CRP. What if your CRP is normal? A normal CRP means there's no significant inflammation at the time of the test. But here's a nuance most people don't know. A normal CRP doesn't rule out all inflammation. Chronic, low-level inflammation, like what you might see in early autoimmune diseases or mild metabolic issues, can sometimes fly under the radar. That's why we interpret CRP results in context. Always, never in isolation. CRP versus ESR, what's the difference? People often ask, why did my doctor order both CRP and ESR? ESR stands for erythrocyte sedimentation rate, and it's another marker of inflammation. 
The difference is in timing and sensitivity. CRP rises quickly within six to eight hours of inflammation and falls just as fast when things improve. ESR rises slower and can stay elevated longer. It's more useful in chronic conditions like lupus or vasculitis. Doctors often use both together for a more complete picture. If CRP is high and ESR is normal, or vice versa, that can offer clues about what's going on. Limitations of the CRP test. Let's be honest. CRP is helpful, but it's not perfect. Here's what you should know. It's nonspecific. It can't tell you the exact cause or location of the inflammation. It's a snapshot. It reflects what's happening right now, but it can change rapidly, sometimes within hours. It can be falsely elevated. Obesity, pregnancy, smoking, even minor infections can bump it up temporarily. It doesn't replace clinical judgment. Your doctor will always consider the bigger picture. So to wrap up, the CRP test is a valuable marker of inflammation, whether we're looking at acute infections or chronic disease risk. High sensitivity CRP is especially useful for evaluating cardiovascular risk in people who seem otherwise healthy. But elevated CRP isn't a diagnosis it's a signal to look deeper. Whether it's a short-term spike or a long-term trend, the key is context and follow-up. If you've had your CRP tested and you're not sure what it means, talk to your doctor. Ask why it was ordered and what it's telling you or not telling you. Because at the end of the day, the numbers are only part of the story. Your symptoms, your history, and your overall health are what truly matter. Thanks for watching. Take care of yourself and I'll see you in the next video.